Hello, everyone. Good morning. Great to see you all on this Monday. Hi, Ruben. Hi, Nick. Juan Pablo, Michael, Lee, Ricardo, Karen, Francisco, Stephen. Great to see many of you. We've got many familiar faces. We've got some new faces. Always a pleasure. Pleasure. Um, uh, thank you guys thank for you being guys here. For um, oh, I'm getting an echo. Just give me a second. Okay. Okay, we're good. So good morning again. My name is Lindsay Lear. For those of you whose first time it is uh, this morning, welcome to our PCMI Payments Industry Coffee Chat Series. We hold these open meetings every other Monday as an opportunity to come together as an industry and discuss payment industry trends, primarily in Latin America. Uh, we're really excited today. We're going to be talking about remittances um, and, and cross-border money movement in general in Latin America with a very special guest who I'll be introducing momentarily. Um, and just a couple of announcements and guidelines to ensure a really successful session today. Our standard legal notice, you know, you, you see that in, in every in every presentation. But more importantly, I want to encourage, we have a lot of new faces today. So to keep in mind, this is not a webinar, okay? Our coffee chat series is designed to be interactive and participatory. So we want your camera on. We want you to ask questions and make comments. We have a presentation today, uh, uh, some slides to share, but we want you to jump in with your questions and comments at any time. So you can do that in the chat. You can wave your hand at me. You can unmute yourself and jump in. Uh, and as long as we maintain a respectful environment, it works very well. So uh, we encourage you to do that. Um, we, are, we are recording this session and these sessions do get, as of this year, we are posting our coffee chat recordings on YouTube. So just keep that in mind um, when, when making your comments. And if there's any issues with that, just let me know and, and we, can, we can see how to, how to accommodate any type of objection in there. But we do want to make this as wide, uh, widely accessible as possible. Okay. Um, so before we dive into our content, a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, um, this week we're having a really exciting webinar event in, in partnership with Pagi Seguro. Uh, we're actually uh, presenting the results of our study on gamers in Latin America. This is really interesting. We've never done this type of study before. I've never seen data that has so comprehensively surveyed gamers in specifically around usage of gaming, um, you know, uh, usage of payment methods, barriers, um, opportunities, et cetera. So I encourage you to sign up. Um, we will have, you can scan the QR code there to sign up. We'll also throw the link in the chat right now for you to access that um, and make sure to sign up uh, this Wednesday um, coming up uh, with, with Pagi Seguro. All right. And then another really exciting announcement that I am really thrilled to be demoing with you all today. Um, you guys are our closest network and we value you so much and you guys come back week after week. And so you are the first in our network to experience the rollout of this new product that we are really thrilled to bring to our network. And it's called the PCMI Intelligence Portal. That's the name for now. It will probably will evolve. But you guys all know that we put out a lot of content um, and that content is spread around our website, our YouTube channel. Uh, our internal files, and we're constantly getting requests for information. Um, and we want to put that information much better at your fingertips and make it able for you to search our content, make you make make it you able to download our content easily and just make it searchable, organized, and really at your fingertips. And so we have launched, and we're rolling out today, uh, the PCMI Intelligence Portal. Okay, and again, you we haven't rolled this out to our full network. This you guys are the first folks to be able to try this out, demo it for us uh, as we improve it and, and evolve it. But basically, this is an online platform um, that is designed to put all the PCMI content at your fingertips, including coffee chats, all of our reports and white papers, our monthly articles, infographics, um, and anything we put out publicly is available for you to search and download um, easily in one platform without having to search for it or, or reach out and ask. And you know, it, it, you know, you're able to access it very easily and on your own terms. Okay. Um, you can also search. So, you know, how often have you guys needed to know what you know banking penetration is or the latest smartphone penetration, or you are looking for a report on buy now, pay later? You're able to search key terms uh, and it will search our entire library 
of content dating back to 2018. Um, so this hopefully is going to be a very useful tool, a valuable tool for you. Um, you've already seen our content and now it just makes it more accessible and searchable. So to give you just a really, really quick demo of what this looks like, uh, in a moment, I'm going to pr prompt you to start to sign up. But uh, basically, once you log into the platform, now I'm switching screens here. This is the platform. This is the intelligence portal. You get into the home screen. You have a couple, you know, an intro video from myself. You have a quick how to use this platform video. Uh, but the platform is very simple and very straightforward. Um, you can log to our blog here to check out our recent articles. Um, you can register for our coffee chats. You guys are already registered, so no issue there. But what you want to do when you access our portal is navigate over to the files button right here. And this has, we have all of our content organized into three main categories. Okay, um, reports and white papers. This is where our most robust and rich content lives. And it's organized by year. So you're able to access the most updated content um, uh, the easiest. So if we go into 2023, you can then find um, all of our presentations, white papers, reports that we've produced this year. Um, you can go in, click on one, you can see a preview and you can download it easily right there from the portal. Okay, um, going back, it, you know, we also have all of our coffee chat decks. Um, oops our coffee chat presentations organized right here. So if you love this session, you want to immediately go download it. It'll be downloaded. It'll be uploaded soon after the coffee chat and you can go in here and uh, start to access the content. Um, let's say as well, you don't necessarily know what year or, or exactly what report you might be looking for. You can go up here to our advanced search, okay? You can throw in any term. If we put in uh, banking penetration, it will call up um, all of the res all of the documents that has that key term. And the very first result is Latin America banking penetration. So you can pull up our 2023 most updated data. And you can also go back and see what other types of, of content we have along these lines. OK. Um, and so this tool I'm hoping is going to be very useful and you all will be able to access whatever, you know, that this will be your first line, your first resource whenever you're looking for data and analysis and insights. And then finally up here, um, these buttons up here will, will link to our some external links, our website where we host all of our webinars that will take you to our YouTube page. And actually um, we have a dedicated payments coffee chat playlist where we're gonna be start, we're gonna be uploading the presentations from this year, previous years, no, uh, but this year where you can access those recordings as well as um, all of our webinars uh, and, and, and other recordings. So you have that at your fingertips as well. Okay, Excellent. so yeah, great we're initiative. very excited. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments? I think I heard someone jumping in. I was saying just excellent, Lizzie. Oh, great. great. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Ruben. Yeah, so I'm excited for you guys to get in here and get your hands dirty, start playing with it. So how do you do so? Um, if right here, uh, so you can scan this QR code. The team's also going to throw a link in the chat right now that'll take you to a form. Fill out the online form, and in a couple of minutes, you will receive an email that will walk you through a very simple login process. You create a username and password, um, and then you'll you'll have immediate access. So you should be able to log into that today. I'll put this up. Just uh, I have several questions. Oh, several. Oh, great. Thank you, guys. I'm excited. Um, so please, you guys are our first guinea pig. So get in there. Um, if if We'd love to hear your feedback. If something is weird or, or tricky or, or not user-friendly, please do let us know. We always want to know how to, how to improve this. And important, this is being offered for free right now. Um, this may or may not go on. We, as, as we add content, as we add features, and as demand for the portal increases, we may implement a, a monthly or yearly subscription fee. But right now, it's free. We want you guys to have first access to it. So I'll just take, you know, another 30 seconds for you guys to scan, access the link. Um, and then after, after the session today, you can kind of start rummaging through it and, and see what you think. All right. Terrific. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into today's topic. Uh, really excited for the conversation today. Um, I'm so pleased 
to introduce Jairo Riveros, Managing Director for the Americas of PaySend, which I think is one of the most exciting global fintechs uh, out there today doing some really cool stuff. So Jairo, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Just a couple of words. Um, I'm Jairo Riveros, based in Miami. I lead the Americas team for PaySend, and I'm also the head of a strategy for the firm. Um, today, we're going to talk about a couple of things that talk a little bit about my career in a sense. It's about disruption, but disruption by evolution. So one of the topics we'll talk is about how interconnected and interoperativity is essential. Number two, a second trend is about instant, instant issuing as an example. And last but not least, about the power of networks, how you should not work alone. So it's not a presentation so much about patient, although I have a number of things about patient, but it's about leveraging those three main trends that all of us can relate with it. Back to you, Lindsay. Perfect, Harry. I love that you related to your own personal story, right? And, and evolution over time. Um, that's what we've been, you know, we've been doing these coffee chats now for, this is our fourth year. And so it's been fascinating to see how things are evolving every year. You know, we'll touch the same topic as we did in previous years and it's a totally different story. So, so I love that. Um, so, you know, Heidi's going to tell us all about PaySend, but essentially um, we're talking about remittances. We're talking about cross-border money movement. And of course, the very first step, uh, the first layer of that is P2P remittances, right? Various, you know, uh, an industry has been around a long time. Um, we've all looked at it. We've all talked about it. We know how, you know, this is an over a $600 billion industry just talking about P2P remittances. Uh, in, in 2022, remittances has continued to increase year over year, almost without fail. Uh, Mexico, looking at Latin America, Mexico is the number two remittance receiver in the world. Um, and so this, of course, is a huge, hugely important topic. Why? Because for, for poverty reduction and socioeconomic well-being of the globe, uh, enabling efficient and affordable remittances is hugely important, and remittances can represent thirty or up to you know fifty percent of a of a country's GDP. Uh, and so, just from from a humanitarian standpoint, and then of course, uh, money movement, efficient money movement, as we become a more globalized economy, uh, is just essential for efficiency and and for achieving more capabilities as technology advances. So. Uh, this is just to get the, the conversation started. We're going to be talking about P2P, but also other verticals. Um, and one major source of inefficiency in, in remittances historically has been the payment rails that are used, right? We, we pretty much see two types of payment rails, either closed loop networks, right, that depend on, um, that depend on retail, uh, retail networks, SWIFT, um, which, which we all know is expensive and, and, and opaque and, and really difficult. And, and more recently, we're, we're starting to see domestic RTP schemes become cross-border in certain corridors and in certain regions. We're seeing that already in Southeast Asia. We see that with UPI in India. And of course, Brazil picks uh, not live yet, but that's in the central bank's roadmap. So, um, but mostly payment rails for international money movement are, are, are quite old um, and, and, and inefficient. So PaySend, I think, is so exciting because they're they're starting to solve for that in a new way, a very unique way. So I'm going to turn it over to Heido. Uh, we're going to walk through the story of PaySend, what they're doing in Latin America. As you guys know, jump in and ask questions. I'm going to be you know asking questions along the way. So we'll turn it over to you, Heido. Thank you. Let's go to the next one, Lindsay. So uh, let's think about PaySend as a platform for consumer and businesses. Consumer is remittances, businesses, any SME, or maybe large companies who have to pay or be paid anywhere, anyhow, in any currency. And that's what PaySend identifies himself for. So we go to the next one. Let's do a little bit of history here about problems in payments. We are all in payments. Uh, I see many familiar names and faces. Uh, thank you for signing up. We know that there has been so, non, so many pain points in payments, but I would like to uh, call three that are critical. One is the time, the time spent to be able to send a remittance or send a wire, whether it's because you have to go to a location or go to pick it up, or you have to give instructions to an institution. 
and it has to go from a bank to a bank to a bank. And the cost associated with it, which is very, very uh, 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 opaque and in many ways difficult to understand, and the barriers that that will take, whether it's the documentation or the lack of inclusivity that it does. And when you see at the traditional value chain, you see that there are so many actors and within those actors, there is always fees associated. This is where we started focusing on at Pace and where we said, let's do uh, a disruption by evolution. So we looked at this value chain and we looked at those four logos that are there. And we said, well, there is something we can do about it. So let's go to the next slide. We started in 2017 in uh, the UK. And our point was, how do we tackle time, costs, and barriers? And we began to develop a solution that leveraged what already existed in the wallets of almost everybody, or at least 12 billion consumers, was a car. You already had a car in place in some shape or form. And therefore, we, just, we started by uh, creating the connection between those, the three main networks, MasterCard, Visa, and China Union Pay. What this means, it means you can use your MasterCard and send money to another car. If it's a MasterCard, easy, money sent. But if it's a Visa from your MasterCard, that's where Paysend comes into play. Or China Union Express, which is their solution that they have as well. And the same happens with all of the others. What that tackle is that we were able to reduce the time by 15X. Why? Because a car to car can be eastern to the large extent possible. The cost, the cost was reduced significantly. Uh, the G20 has committed themselves that they expect that remittances by 2020, uh, by 2030 should not be more than 3% of the value. Uh, we were able to bring costs and others like us uh, to a, a fixed fee, very low, and the barriers. Uh, of course, understanding that this solution was based on cars existing. So that's how we started in 2017. Uh, first transaction took place from the UK to Eastern Europe. And out of that, we first year, we were able to enroll about a million customers at the moment. Let's go to the next one. As we were evolving- One, one, one million customers, you said, Heidel, worldwide. In the first year, yes. Oh, in the first year, okay. Got in the it. first year. Right now, we have about uh, seven plus million uh, currently. Uh, we could have been reaching 10, uh, but of course, like many other companies, we see operation in Russia because of the conflict, mm -hmm. like Western Union, like MasterCard, like Visa. So all those customers that we had in Russia with about 2.5 million, basically we closed their accounts for obvious reasons. Perfect. Let's go to the next one. So what happened at that evolution in 2017 is that we began then to say, okay, we have it, a, a, a value prop that will focus to, to a certain extent trends that will be seen in the marketplace and that others uh, were also looking at it looking at the wise of the world, the revolutes of the world. Yes, the three of us happen to be uh, uh, London-based, uh, but there were many others around the world. Instantaneous, looking at instant messaging and settlement. Freemium, being able to bring the cost down as much as possible, and all-to-all -all payments. So we became principal members of Visa, MasterCard, China Union Pay. Uh, we became issuers, acquirer. Uh, we became processor. Uh, and basically, as you can see, the value chain basically removed a number of the actors, making it very simple, very fast. Uh, and that's why it's sort of we talk about simple money transfer, like it's in my T-shirt right now, uh, because that, that is our model. Let's make it as simple as possible. Now, let's go to the next one. So, Heido, just one, yeah. one, several questions on the flow here. So is Paysend a customer-facing platform, or is it a behind-the-scenes white label? We have two. For consumers, okay. individuals like all of us in this room, in this room, we are a customer-facing platform that is has an app, but also web-based. And if it's for businesses, then we are uh, we provide an API and we white label that platform and a solution to them. Got it. So if I'm a customer and I want to send money using Payson, I download the app. I I guess affiliate a, a debit card to the app. So the process, I'll have, I have a slide on that, if you don't mind. I'll, okay, I'll perfect. I'll that question for a second. I'll get back to that one. Yes, you know definitely. I mean? Let's go to the next one for a second. I will promise to get back. Today, out of the uh, seven years of uh, uh, evolution since 2017, we now can say, or six years, we now have uh, basically developed 
a very robust, one of the most robust platforms worldwide. We can send to 170 countries around the world in a car using the car schemes. We also are connected directly to 64 uh, Eastern uh, 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 payment networks um, around the world. Uh, that's what we call our global banking network and to 32 uh, uh, wallets in 32 countries. And this includes the large one like Alipay and WeChat. So basically this whole platform we offer now two, and this is our next slide, we offer it two, three different customer segments. If you go to the next one, we have on the left side, the consumer. This is the individual. This is instant international transfers with low fixed fees. This is remittances. And I have a slide on how it works. The second in the middle is businesses. Think about in a small and medium sized business that has to either pay their supplier or collect the receivables or pay the workforce uh, that is more international. So up to date, why is offer a solution, which is a, a account to account? What we bring into the equation is a robust platform that says you can pay to car as well as you can pay to wallet uh, and, and, and it's instant. And the second is that you can also um, have it in multi-currency. So in some cases, you can have an account that you can pay uh, whether it's euros or pounds or dollars or many other currencies around the world, about seven at the moment that we support. And on the right side, and I'll talk a little bit later, is about labeling or why labeling our platform, those that robust one of 170 countries and 64 to bigger enterprises. And I will uh, tell you about it in a minute. So let's go to what the question that you ask, which is the next slide. These are the four screens that are basic on our consumer business. The left side, you download the app and you link, you enroll, whether it's a debit mostly, could be any car, but nowadays you can also enroll your ACH or you can use Apple Pay, Google Pay and other wallets to fund the transaction. You select the country among the 170, it varies, depends on where you are, and you select to send it. We send from the UK, we can originate from Europe, from Canada, from the US, and from other selected countries. We can originate from Mexico, for instance, but we cannot originate from Argentina, as an example, um, just to clarify. Now, uh, our fees are fixed, $2 in the case of the US or one pound. Um, then what you do is you select the country, you select the receiver, uh, you enter their car. Uh, if you are sending to a car, you enter the account number. If you are sending to an account or their wallet number, uh, and basically you originate the fund. In some geographies like the UK and Canada, we are doing some value added services, uh, providing other, other options like the multi-currency account or a, a subscription base. So you can send more for less, um, experimenting with some others. So this is the consumer phase. Now, the next one will take us to the enterprise phase. I've got a quick question here. You say you're Please. charging $2. Is that That's how much pay send charges? Or is that the full charge to the customer? In other words, do the cards get their cut as well? That's the full charge. That's the full charge. So you there is a $2 card. charge to do an international remittance. Exactly. Any amount. Any amount. Yes, it's, it's, it's a disruptor indeed. All right. $2. So the cards. The so US. there's no additional cost to the consumer from American Express or, or from Visa, for example. If you use your debit, no. If you use a credit, it will be considered like an advance as you find the transaction. Now, okay. when arrives, when arrives in the card of your relative, let's say Maria in Mexico, there is no charge for her at all. No charge at all. The money arrives in its totality. The other thing that you will see is that you enter the amount, as you can see in the second screen, you enter the amount in the sending uh, currency and you know exactly how much the receiver is gonna get right there before you even select approved. You know exactly how much you're gonna get. So we have full transparency on the FX as well. And Jairo, it pushes the funds directly to, to the payment method you selected, right? So if it goes to a debit card, it's going to hit their debit card, which will hit their bank account, 
right? Exactly. And it's probably 30 seconds, in some cases faster. Uh, depends on some markets. Some markets might take a little bit later. There are some uh, uh, regulations, uh, Reg E in the United States, which requires that individuals have the right to cancel it within 30 minutes. So in some cases, we have to hold the transaction for 30 minutes to wait if the person changed their mind. And if it doesn't, then boom, at the 30 minutes and 30 seconds, the money is there. Um, so it's a very, very, very uh, uh, um, uh, fast and efficient way at a fixed fee, no matter how much right. you send. And is there any distinction between a receiving, sending to a debit card versus a prepaid card? Since a lot of fintechs, they're technically prepaid cards, even though they look and feel like a debit card. Is there any that difference there? In that case, no. And in fact, I will, I have an example of one of the trends that I was referring to uh, later on. Uh, okay, uh, perfect. How do we compete with Visa Direct? That's an excellent question. Well, the point is, remember, I talk about interconnectivity. So Visa Direct can, can send Visa to Visa. But if you are using your Visa to send to a MasterCard, Visa Direct cannot provide that. Payson will provide you that. Or if you are sending from your MasterCard to a Visa or to a China Union Pay, that's where we are different to it. So yes, we use Visa Direct Rails. We are principal member of them. We are the largest customer globally of Visa Direct and the larger customer globally of MasterCard Money Send. But when, when we cross them, that's where we, that's, that, that's a unique platform for, uh, or a unique proposition for us. So you guys are essentially making Visa and MasterCard Rails interoperable. Um, Absolutely. And, 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 and I China Union the Pay. first in the world that I've seen doing that. Correct. And China Union Pay. I know we don't talk much yeah. about China Union Pay in the Americas, but it's the largest card network in the world. Of course. Yeah. I mean, way larger than Visa and MasterCard together. Um, uh, so, you know, we don't talk about that, but within global, they are significantly important. Absolutely. Do we use the, ICE, uh, the ISO 2022? Uh, uh, in part, yes. Do we use all the rails of them? No. The, I mean, we have developed our own platform. There are things in which we were complying, of course, but there are few proprietary rails that we use for this interconnectivity. Got it. But feel free to keep posting questions as you, as you want. Let's look at the next one. The next one is quite exciting because this is where we white label our platform. They don't know who we are. We basically offer payout to cards. I talked to you, it's you know about 170 countries, payout to accounts, faster payments, Swift, SEPA, or big wallets, Alipay, WeChat, and others. So, or API in India. So what happened is we white label a platform and we now offer it to FinTechs, financial institutions, NGOs, corporate e-commerce platform for them to transact, to have an alternative rather than using their banks, who we know have corresponding steps or corresponding banks and charge about $25 to $45 per transaction. Who are our customers on this? First customer is MasterCard. What does it mean? MasterCard goes to the bank and says, you can send to any MasterCard. That's what they call MasterCard Money Send. That's the product they offer. But now they say also you can send it to any card in the world because they are they are white label from us at the bottom. The second will be deal, T5, and on top a remote pass. All those four are global global payroll companies. Think about ADP, but globally. And what happened is that these companies came very attractive as part of the pandemic when workers decided that they want to live in Oaxaca and now they want to get paid in Oaxaca. So ADP cannot do that. And these companies that are worth billions of dollars are offering this service and we offer them as well. Now I have a question. What could be a value added service to compare your such as Yellow Pepper, a visa solution? We know what Yellow Pepper is. Yellow Pepper is an alias. We in fact work with Yellow Pepper. So what Yellow Pepper would allow you is to have, to be able to send to an alias instead of a card number. That's what, that's what it is. But Yellow Paper can only send to Visa or if you use the alias. Again, if you want to have the interconnection between Visa and MasterCard, you will be on the rails of, of, of Paysen, which is connected to both of them. I hope that answers the so question. So that's a great question. So just to clarify, you know, in, in the existing platform, you have to know the receiver's card number. 
or do you already have an alias directory built in or is that kind of in the roadmap no that that's correct in today's in today's you either have to know the card number the the, the 16 digits or the account numbers mm -hmm. or the wallet number now uh, again evolution by or, or disruption by evolution uh, i'll tell you in a second what we are piloting in guatemala and how is going to go to the next trend which is instantaneously and also leveraging the network's connectivities. Mm. Good, let's go to the next one. Voila, you take us exactly to the <laughs> We call it Pace and Libre. And the rationale of Libre is to liberate from exclusion, financial exclusion from high fees and from the fact that you might not have a car. So while we started this solution in 2017, voila, fantastic. But what if you don't have a car? What if you are unbanked or underbanked? Well, you have to still go to those yellow and black stores. You know, I don't want to say the name. And you have to <laughs> online and you have to give your cash and the other person will have to collect it. So let's go to the next one. What is Libre? Libre has been built to tackle precisely the US Latam corridor. Out of those 650 billion that Lindsay, you were saying, 150 are to Latam. And out of those, you mentioned 60 billion are to Mexico. And when you think about the population of Mexico or the North Triangle, Guatemala, Salvador, and Honduras, these are populations that are underbank or unbank. But they do have significant penetration on mobile, non, on mobile phones and smart mobile phones as well. They do have significant penetration on internet, but they still unbank on our underbank. So we, like many others, have decided to join together and develop a solution, whether it's together or in parallel, um, together with MasterCard and the uh, Partnership for Central America, we tackle this by developing a new product. This is, by the way, Harry Kamali's vice president initiative to reduce the immigration and poverty in the North Triangle. So because of that, we said, OK, let's look at what the solution can be. And the next one. Uh, tackles that. This is a cash society. So we basically said, if you look at the next one, um, that what we did is, okay, let's let's take the model to the next level. Let's look at the one, two, three, and so on. First, the sender chooses a contact and creates a payment. So our app now talks to your directory on your phone. You know the name and the phone number of the person, just like cell in the US. You create a payment, pay in, hold the funds, and create a virtual car, a virtual master car that the receiver uh, 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 accepts. They get a text. The text takes them to the to the uh, uh, pay in app. They download the app. They take put the number, their address, and they receive uh, uh, a instant issuing digital car. This is a prepaid. Uh, in a way, this is the combination of what prepaid debits will be. It's not an account, it's a prepaid. They have the funds and they can spend them in local currency. How they can spend them? Number one, they can spend them on e-commerce. Number two, they can use the wallets and spend it on transit. Extensively now, Guatemala, Mexico, Panama, so you can use transit, uh, uh, your, 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 your digital cars. And we are also allowing a cash pickup option. So you can begin to cash. The difference is you don't have to cash everything. When you use the white and, and black, you go and you receive all your money in cash. You walk out and you're at risk. In this case, you can cash a little bit that you need and you can maintain the rest on the prepaid card on the digital funds. But number three can also request money. So what happens? Number three can request, let's say it's Maria in Mexico, can write to their relative in the US and say, could you send me money via PayCent? And then the person receives a text, downloads the app, links the car and sends the fund. So we're trying to generate that if you are not bankerized, you get the ability to still receive a card right away. I call it bankerization 0.1. It's not even 1.0, it's 0.1, mm -hmm. it's just the beginning, just the beginning. Now. Even if you have a car, you can decide to accept that you want to receive your remittance in a new car. And in the future, this new car will have a number of benefits, value-added services. So you might stay with that in a way. 
Now, what are the benefits here? If we go to the next one for a minute, this is the evolution we're talking. Simplicity. For us to go to Latin, within Europe, car to car, very well known, a lot of POSs, a lot of uh, interaction. But in the case of US to Latin, we wanted simplicity, just the recipient's mobile number. And once we roll this out, of course, we'll roll it out globally as well. A speed. We want the funds to be arrived right away in that instantaneous car that is issued, rather than having to take the bus and go to pick up your funds. And the reliability that you can expend it, whether it's online or the wallets, or you can withdraw, withdraw cash in some locations uh, as well. So those are three elements that uh, we believe will contribute to financial inclusion, financial education, because in a way people are learning how to uh, keep some money for later, um, and of course, uh, to be able to uh, in, in help in the economy in many ways. Let's go to the next one. Now, this doesn't work. I'm going to talk about a third trend. So let's let's recap. The first trend was interoperability. We created between MasterCard, China Union Pay, and Visa. The second trend was about instantaneously. Get your money instant, get your car instant digital issuing, those are, we all expect things now because we want it right now. The third one is the power of working with networks. Pace and Libre will not be successful unless we bring others into play. So we know that Visa has a very large extensive accounts and debit cards in Latin. So we are leveraging their existing card network. In the case of MasterCard, it's a new digital issue. Access to cash up, pick up, and there are a couple of others on it. I'm going to refer to two that I believe bring some, a little bit of color why this is important in many ways. So if we go to the next slide, we just recently announced about a month and a half ago that Paysen and Televisa Univision, which is the world largest Hispanic network, Televisa is in Mexico, Univision is in the US, they merged a couple of years ago. We signed a partnership to address financial inclusion in Latin. And what this means, if you go to the next slide, is that starting on August 21st, Paysen will be highlighted as a brand into the homes across the US via multiple platforms, mm -hmm. linear TV, radio, digital channels, streaming, but not just as a publicity, but as a solution where the uh, celebrities will be explaining the simplicity of Paysen will be inviting to use it, and we will be uh, 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 including some promotions and value add services. But the idea is that all the 62 million Hispanics that sit on the living room, watch TV, watch the news, watch the novelas, can now find that there's a better alternative to send funds to their, to their relatives in Latin America. Uh, Mexico is a big market for obvious reasons because of the content of Televisa, uh, but this is a major initiative. Let's don't do it alone. Let's work with a partner that now we are both speak to the same customer with the same uh, interest and impact that we want to bring. Faster, low, and simple money transfers. Um, so this is a major partnership. Uh, a Television Mission became a shareholder of Paysen. Uh, so this is not that we're buying publicity. This is a now both companies are willing to do this together. Any questions? Yes. The enterprise solution, who is responsible for the client KYC and ILM? An excellent question. If it's a white label, it's the company. In the case of deal, it's deal. In the case of MasterCard, bank, they offer it to the bank, is the bank. We only op operate internally as connecting, making it faster from one to the other. In the case of the consumer, we are responsible for the KYC and AML. Because you're the issuer, right? In, in, in Pesta Libre, when you guys are issuing these instant debit cards, you are the issuer, is that right? That's correct. Okay. We are the issuer. Yes. So you guys are doing, got it, got it. So, now let's Cairo. go to the, yes. Cairo, just a quick question for Latin America. For those countries who has a uh, monetary um, economy, like, uh, you know, you have uh, your uh, credit card balance in US dollar and in local currency. The recipient get the money from US, for instance, in US dollar or get the money in local currency? Local currency. Always, okay. Always in local currency, yes. 
Now, we know that Salvador is a dollarized economy, so there will be USD. Right. We know that in the future, when we roll it out in Panama and Ecuador, the same will apply. But besides that, sure. there will be low things. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I get you. No, I just was thinking about certain countries who has a difficult this to get money there <laughs> okay thanks exactly you. no 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 it is and of course there are countries where we do not operate and because they are sanctioned right now i mean venezuela is one of them uh okay. and, you know, we have to acknowledge that okay so partnership second bbc now this is important because getting to know pace and libre we really wanted to get not only the users that are going to benefit because they're going to hear through televisa univision and programming but also because we believe that we want to involve others in these solutions. We want to bring. So in the next slide, I invite all of you to go and just Google, just put Pace and Libre BBC, and it will take you to a documentary that BBC did for us in Guatemala. It's a real story about two brothers, one in the US, one in Guatemala, with the same desire to have better lives for their families. And how they continue to, uh, uh, without a bank account and, uh, and difficulties of receiving funds, Pace and Libre brings them a new solution. And that new virtual car uh, is helping him to take control of his finances, as well as having more time for his family. Uh, this was not a commercial, it's a documentary. It's called BBC StoryWorks, which they highlight innovative finance, uh, companies in innovation in finance around the world. And we were selected in 2023. This was filmed early in the year, and it was just released about uh, a month and a half ago. Um, uh, we won, you can see it now in all the BBC channels. Uh, we are promoting the video to other companies. I mean, in the future, I would love to have Walmart join and say, I'll accept your pace in Libre, for instance, uh, even if it's virtual, as an example, because you can come and shop here and, and, you, and we can give it some discounts. I would love for uh, a, a, an extension of other banking institutions to say, if you are bancarization 0.1, let me open a savings account for them. So maybe they can move from 0.1 to 0.5 and eventually get there. So there is so many things that we can do together if we work in a way one with other. My last slide is about where this goes. So we're piloting Guatemala with Pace and Libre. It's live today. You send to Guatemala. You live in Guatemala. You can request. But starting 2024, we're going to, and that's the last slide that I have, to take it around uh, um, other countries in, in Latin America. We're taking the time to learn from the customer experience. We're taking the time to understand the behavioral aspects. We're taking the time to understand, uh, to build that, 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 that uh, um, um, knowledge base uh, uh, that would allow us to do it well in other countries, which will benefit in many ways from this. And eventually we'll go around the world uh, as well. Um, Televisa is, Univision is very interested that we take it to Mexico for obvious reasons, uh, but they also are interested in speaking to the large uh, Hispanic population around around that time. So that's the story of Pace N. Let me recap a couple of things. One, interconnection. If I can connect to the wallets, let's look at what Visa Plus is doing in the US or experimenting. We all have Celle or we have, uh, I can't remember what the other, or PayPal or we have, but they're trying to see how they can talk to each other. So that interconnection is key. It's a trend, it's happening. We are pioneers from the car to car, but eventually, hopefully we all connect to everyone. Second trend is about instant, instantaneously, whether it's receiving the money, receiving my car, being able to use the funds now. And last but not least is we cannot do it alone. We need all to work together uh, in one shape or form. And hopefully all of you will come with some ideas of how we can work together and we'll be more than happy to do it. Amazing. Thank you, Gerardo. Congrats on, on all the progress at BBC. You know, I think you, you've just, you've accomplished so much and are th really thinking about it holistically. So congrats. Um, Could I share my email? Absolutely. So I'm just going to put it here on it. Chat. And let's connect on LinkedIn as well, uh, which she will be more than happy, but I put it on the chat, my email. Uh, I have a no, couple of questions, Gerardo. So, so the Pesa Libre solution, for the recipient, it's actually quite techy, right? I get a virtual card, 
Um, I can use that for e-commerce. I can use that in for contactless payments in wallets. So that's kind of advanced, right? For someone who's never had a bank account or who you operates totally in cash. So what's your, what's the strategy for, is, is it just kind of like, this is going to take time or, or what are the you know strategies you guys have to roll it out locally and really help people understand and, and gain adoption? Excellent question, Lindsay. Uh, yes, we need to acknowledge that, yes, it is. Maybe you close the presentation so like we can see everybody. Sure. Uh, thank you. Great. Yes, we need to acknowledge that it is, it is technologically sort of the next level. Uh, but we also have to recognize that uh, developments uh, sometimes surprises us. Uh, we all know about M-Pesa in Africa, how basically has gone like holistic using minutes as a currency. And, and tr try to explain that to someone, uh, but in reality, that's the case. So um, we're going to have educational campaigns uh, funded by the networks to be able to explain how this works locally, whether there are local events that will happen in one place, uh, whether it's in Guatemala in the future in Mexico, or the communities that are senders like Los Angeles, Chicago, New York. Um, there will be educational videos. Um, uh, one of the first promotions or recognition that will appear on television vision will be in fact, sort of a cartoonish of how this works to start creating. The steps that I believe personally, I hope, I'm right, but I'm willing to learn from it, is that we need to build first awareness. Awareness that actually there is another way for remittances. The second one is adoption. You feel secure, therefore you adopt it. And then a scale will be later. I'm more focusing at this moment in awareness and later on in adoption. The scale, I believe we have to prove that it works well, the scale will come. So we are not going to be on scale or promotions or free. we're going into let me explain that this is a new way and it's secure for you but it will take time too as well mm -hmm. veronica do you have a question veronica i think you're on mute while we wait for veronica to speak i just want to read on the chat looking forward to having a migro the traveler digital water integrated. Great idea. Let's do it. I mean, this is it's an ecosystem. And if we all work together, the better. I have a question. Please. Um, so you so you're doing the interoperability, which is phenomenal um, and difficult as well, but that's why you need a company that specializes in that. But you're also saying that people can would sign up to have an account, but you can leave the money in it if you're receiving funds. Is that correct? Well. It is and it's not. Imagine it's a prepaid that you don't use all the funds at the same time. Okay. So, so yeah, but basically you can keep a balance and then it's convenient. You can use it whenever you need it. Are it, you not then competing with the mobile wallets? Because what you have now is a mobile wallet that you can use anywhere in the world. You, in, in a way, have a better mobile wallet than the regional ones or the national ones. Uh, it could be. I, I always like to say that I would love to sit down with a regional wallet and figure out how we can collaborate. Because while I have some advantage point, I also don't have the localization experience that they do mm -hmm. and the knowledge. So I might be able to bring something into it and the local can bring a very vast well, on it. Yeah, I mean, that, that's... That's nice. You can work on business agreements, but the reality at the end of the day is individual people decide where they put their money. That's and if correct. they decide that you have uh, more features that they use than the wallet they used to have their money in, they're switching over. Now, that, that's one of the problems is like I'm seeing here is you've got the potential to be competing with your customers. Your customers yeah. being the mobile wallets and financial institutions. Yeah, in that case, I hope we can build interoperativity with some local wallets as well, because I believe that in case, our case is focusing on remittance. So the your relative sending you money from the U.S. as an example, but these local wallets also have distribution of government funds, for instance, 
that the government uh, provides some uh, vouchers or support or um, so in that case, I hope that I can collaborate with them um, rather than, uh, because again, it won't be, won't be difficult to replace them uh, or for me to get in that business. Uh, one example is Moby in Colombia, which uh, we have excellent relationships together with them. They do have a lot of that, that um, uh, recipient of, of, of government benefits. Um, but just like uh, Larry is saying, in some cases, the local don't have, uh, a, let's say national wallets don't have onboarding fees. For example, you need the extra features. Yeah, we don't have onboarding fees either. Um, uh, but yes, maybe there are connections here. I see a lot of hands raising. Lindsay, why don't you manage it? Because... Uh, <laughs> oh dear, I stopped. I think, Veronica, you, you left, but yes, I think you yes. back in. Are you here? Yes, I can. I can. Sorry, I Please couldn't. I couldn't unmute before. Uh, uh, Jairo, I have. A, I have a question. Uh, you you presented two different models. One model is the purely remittances from P 2 P, and then uh, you presented the aggregator model. I, I was trying to understand how. What is the value proposition? How do you differentiate from any other digital providers? that we have at the moment or any other payment aggregators? How do you differentiate from Tunes, TerraPay, for example, that they also offered the same uh, products that you do uh, and, and the same thing on the remittance side from the digital providers? I mean, it, it's an excellent question. And, and by the way, I'm gonna answer this, also answer another one that came on the chat. Uh, we operate in countries that are not restricted. So if you think about it, restricted countries now are you know, globally known, the Iran's of the world, Russia, of course, Venezuela. So those are countries that are where we cannot operate by any means. Now, let's look at what you mentioned on it. So we have one platform. The platform offers 170 countries car to car, 64 bank accounts, instant bank accounts, whether it's API in India or whether it's SEPA in Europe, and 30 plus wallets. Now, all that platform, which is one platform, we offer it to either consumers or businesses. So when we think about how we differentiate, so let's think about Tunes, which you know, know them quite well. They are great in wallets, but they are difficult to send to cards. They are not connected with MasterCard. They are not connected with Shanghai Union Pay. Now, as an example, that's where we're different, that we offer that- They are connected with Visa. They are connected only with Visa, yes but they are not connected with MasterCard and China Union Pay. So they will need to go and connect with MasterCard and with China Union Pay themselves. And it's gonna take them time and cost. And they're also connected with Visa, but only in limited countries. We have 170 already connected. That's a little bit of the difference. Now, when you think about the other one that you mentioned, remind me the name. TerraPay. Excuse me? Oh, TerraPay. Terra, we, we, we leverage TerraPay. In some of the connections, we actually connected to TerraPay. And they uh, hopefully will be connected to us very soon as well in some of the card to cards. So you are beginning to see that the Terra Pays the, uh, uh, of the world, uh, the uh, only tellers of the world, uh, uh, eventually the, uh, the locals of the world, as well as us, uh, will probably be working together quite well and quite close. Hi, on that note, let me ask you, um... Basically, what I think what we're starting to see is there's lots of these networks popping out, popping up. There's so much opportunity. There's a lot of companies coming in, solving for different corridors, solving for different use cases, all interconnecting with each other. Um, so, and you guys are offering a lot. You're doing consumer, you're doing business, you're doing you know countries all around the world. So, can, what are you're offering multiple payment rails? So, what are some like where is your business consolidated? Where? Are you seeing the main volumes, the, the main use cases? What are some patterns or habits you can point to in terms of how customers are actually using the platform? There was an article recently written about us that you can Google it by FXC, which is one of the companies that do research on payments as well, and collaborators with you. I believe this is, uh, again, not everybody can have the last answer to everything. Where they interviews us, uh, and you can Google it easily, uh, based and FXE report, uh, what it took us about where we're heading. We foresee that the, the majority of our business will be on the white level in the future. Mm. That's, that's where we foresee the business going into. 
where we are going to be offering our platform that we have now developed throughout the last uh, six years with a very robust cases. Any institution, pick a bank, if they will need to connect with Visa Direct or MasterCard Money Send, they will need to go one by one, country by country, and it will take them forever. It will be very expensive, uh, over the 100K uh, subscriptions implementation. With one API, we offer them 170 countries. So we believe that's going to be the case. With one exception, delivery. I am a believer of the inclusion. So that solution of enterprise is great for everybody who has an account, who manages funds. But for the unbank, underbank, I am a true believer and a hopeful uh, a, a, a champion of delivery. Delivery will be a, a solution. How big is the market? Well, in the case of Latin, it's almost, I don't know, 60% under bank and bank or, or larger, huge. Now, small ticket items, it's about $150 remittance, the 250. In the case of the white labeling, it's completely different because we're talking about different uh, uh, ranges of, uh, of transfers. So that's how we see the industry heading. I can see that Gary has the hand up quite a bit ago. Let me go there. Thank you very much, Jairo. I had a question there. I had to see in my perception, you have a issued card in different parts depending on the bank you are located because you need to enable the license for each country. That's correct for the prepaid cards. Well, you need to have a license to pay the cards on some issues. You have to have a KYC process for each one of the person, or that's going to be something handled for you, or we can use also use service as a virtual card to send to another people inside the network. We, for example, have a customer that can use it to pay out some service, payrolls, different situation. We can use in the same car. How do you think about it, the process of the business for third, third parties of connection with you? Well, I mean, I give the quantum solution, suppose. How are you going to be using also for to be possible? I, I, everything is possible. I, I'll have to think about it. I, I, I'm going to take a rain check on this, on this, on, on this question, and maybe <laughs> follow up individually with you to understand what it what it will be. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's possible. Um, we'll just have to look at it. I mean, imagine right now. We are customer, the largest customer of MasterCard. I'm going to finish with that. We're the largest customer of MasterCard Money Send. But they are our customer on our enterprise API solution. I know. I, I think mean, it's a it's a really yeah. fan, fabulous uh, case study of creatively you creating operability in many creative ways and and um, you know linking together uh, lots of different networks. And when you do that questions inevitably arise. How do customers choose? At the end of the day, customers have choice. Um, at the end of the day, you become friend. Are you frenemies? Are you partners? Are you competitors? You know, all of these questions have, have come up their time, you know, age old questions. So um, thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see how you guys continue to develop and see how Pace and Libre um, unfolds. Um, really exciting stuff. Uh, thank you for, for, for sharing your expertise with us. And um, for any other questions, I think there were one or two we didn't get to. So apologies for that. Please re reach out to Haido on, on LinkedIn or email for that. And a reminder, we'll be back on July 10th. We're jumping into back into a little bit of the crypto space, stable coins um, and, and crypto as a service, uh, which has been on the back burner a little bit uh, for the past six months. But we still have a very interesting, a uh, lot, lot of very interesting trends taking, on, taking place. We're going to hear from Arnoldo from Paxos on July 10th. So make sure you bookmark that. And once again, please make sure you guys sign up for our, we're still alive in crypto. Absolutely, Blake. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll, we'll hear from, from Arnaldo there. Hope to see you on July 10th. And uh, please do, once again, I've just put the chat, the link there for you to sign up for our intelligence portal. Make sure you do that. Uh, we we want to hear, we want you guys to get access to all this information uh, as fast, as easy as possible. So uh, Jairo, thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. And the whole Pace and team is here, Lenis and, and Beatriz. Thank you guys for all your support. And we'll look forward to seeing you all the next time. Thank you so much.